These steps in the rock are an ancient history book of the life of extremophiles. To understand that ancient record of extremophiles, we have to study closely the ecosystems of hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is very well known for what we call the charismatic megafauna. The grizzlies, the elk, the fox, the bears. Everyone loves these large organisms. What the work that's been done globally on these hot spring systems has now given us is the concept of charismatic microfauna. The bacteria, the archaea, are just as dramatic, just as important, and in fact much more long-lived in Earth history than any of the charismatic macrofauna have been. Our studies over the years have shown that these travertine limestones uh, precipitate and are deposited at extremely high rates. In fact, they are upwards of one million to one billion times faster than the rate at which limestone can be accumulated and deposited in other natural systems, such as the bottom of the ocean, the middle of a cave, or the center of a lake. And here at Mammoth Hot Springs, we have one of the greatest natural laboratories in the world, where the water erupts from the ground at about 73 degrees Celsius, flows along the landscape. And as it flows, the interactions between the microbes and the water create the travertine terrace morphologies, which is the hallmark of Mammoth Hot Springs. So our question is, what was the relative balancing act between environmental factors like temperature and acidity, and the factors of the microbes that live as you can see easily from all the colors of the pigments in the microbes on these terraced travertine limestone deposits. This is a very important position within the spring system because the large bacteria create a substrate on which the travertine can grow. And we can see that easily in these streamer fabrics that are part of the substrate. The bacteria that live at this position in the spring like high temperatures, and we call those organisms extremophiles. And one of our questions is, what extremophiles live here, and what do they do for a living? So the way to understand that is we want to collect the extremophile living in the spring with the travertine growing on it, and at that moment then extract the DNA to allow us to make interpretations of who's living there and what they're doing. So the way we go about doing that is to carefully take sterile tubes place them in the water, fill the tube partially with some spring water, close this, and return it to the laboratory. Our work on hot spring travertine has shown that bacteria and archaea have the ability to control the shape, form, and distribution of travertine, as well as the rate at which the travertine forms. We are now taking that information and applying it directly to coral reefs around the world. Remarkably, coral skeletons are very similar to travertine. 
And therefore, using these understandings, we, we can make predictions of how corals would begin to respond to increases in global sea surface temperature. The hot springs house a huge amount of biodiversity. For example, in the six meters of flow, there's more genetic diversity in microorganisms than there is on the entire planet. <laughs>